On this week's Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show, the Bucks open up the postseason with a trip to Massachusetts to take on the Pirates. And naturally, the Bucks weren't the only playoff game going around the IFL. We take you across the league to see who punched their ticket to this week's semifinals and who had their season come to a close. And with the season winding down, we give a special thank you to the people who mean the most to the Bucks, the fans. It's all coming up on this week's Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show, which starts right now. Welcome inside our Beck Studios, everybody. I'm David Sugarman, and this is the Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show. After wrapping up the regular season seven and eight, the Bucks were chomping at the bit to get into their first ever trip to the IFL playoffs. First up, and hopefully their first victim, were the Massachusetts Pirates, a team the Bucks had gone 0-2 against in the regular season. Massachusetts, maybe the hottest team in the league, the number two seed, winners of eight in a row. However, late first quarter, it was the Bucks who would strike first. Near the goal line, option to Isaiah Strayhorn. Three yards later, and the Bucks take an early 7-0 lead. Early second quarter, same score, Pirates quarterback Alejandro Benefield to wide out Thomas Owens. Gave the Bucks fits all year long. Nine yard score, we're locked at seven. Just three and a half to go until halftime. On the ground, the speed of running back Laquiviante Le Gonzalez breaks the Malik Duncan tackle four yards into the end zone, 14-7. After a late field goal, Pirates go into the half up 17-7. Midway through the third quarter, same score. Benefield looking to Owens laying out 14 yards. He finished with five catches, 47 yards, and the two scores. Pirates in the driver's seat, 14-7. Bucks not going away. Early fourth, it's Strayhorn again. Bulldozing his way into the end zone. 30 yards and two scores for him. Bucks missed the extra point. However, the lead's down to 11. Early fourth. Benefield takes it in himself. Two yard score, Pirates miss the extra point. Lead is 17, 30 to 13. Later in the fourth, Lewis looking for Lorenzo West. Off his fingertips, picked off by DB Arian Maxi Penton. Pick six, 30 yards for him. Pirates firmly in control, 37, 13. We fast forward just 21 seconds to go. It's 41, 13 at this point. Quarterback Kenyatta Allen, one more touchdown, 25 yards to Mike Kerrigan. And in the first game in the IFL history in playoffs for the Bucks, they fall short, 44 to 19. Pirates move on to the semifinals. Bucks wrap the season seven and nine. Afterwards, the Bucks said the big difference in the game was not a complicated one. The most discipline, disciplined team is going to win. Uh, the, if you don't make a lot of mistakes, you're going to win that playoff game. And the more hungry a team, they're going to win. So it's like we we wasn't that on Saturday, and they were. And they that's how <laughs> that's the, what I learned going into the future. It was execution for us on offense. Uh, no matter you know who it was or we're not we were you know we're not going to assign blame to anyone. We just as a group didn't execute. That's really all it came down to. Other scores around the league in the first round. Maybe the best game of the opening weekend. Duke City skates by Iowa with a touchdown at the horn, plus a deep extra point after the penalty, 34-33. to Frisco takes down Spokane at a fun game, 44-33. to And top-seeded Arizona had no trouble with the defending champ Sioux Falls, knocking out the storm, 69-42. to And that sets up... The semifinals, taking a look at the reseeding, top-seeded Arizona will take on Duke City. And in the 2-3 matchup, Frisco will take on Massachusetts, who just beat the Bucks. With the Bucks season having come to a close, unfortunately, only one team can win their final game. However, there's no denying the Bucks made some massive strides this season, going from 2-12 in 2019 to a franchise record seven wins this past season, and that's not the only thing the Bucks really improved on. Ultimately, the Bucks won seven games, and that's the most in the IFL, and 
They did this despite a fair amount of adversity, and not just the normal wear and tear and roster turnover, but five different quarterbacks. Some other highlights, the Bucs went 4-0 against Green Bay and even showed they could hang with the best of the best when they edged out Frisco, then 6-1, now the three seed in the playoffs, 43-42 on a last-second two-point conversion stop. Maybe the landmark win of the season, it showed the Bucs had come a long way from the 2019 struggles and the team is proud to have earned the respect of the rest of the league. Now teams, when they look at business markets, it's not going to be an easy game. It's not going to be oh, the homecoming type of field game. It's going to be you want to have to bring your hard hat to work. And I think we really did that by changing the culture here this year. We brought a new era to Bismarck that never was here. So we brought some swagger out there and we played our game. The coaches did everything the coaches asked and we did, a, we did a great job. I mean, to turn a team around that was 2-12 and 12 one year to 7-8. and eight, it's pretty good. It's hunger. So I mean, we got to playoffs. So like we know what it takes to win a playoff game. Now we know that we can't make the mistakes and keep and keep getting penalized. So it's just going into the offseason, just like always having that drive. Like, all right, like, I want to be back in the playoffs. I want to win the playoffs and just win one game at a time and just get back to the, and just get into the United Bowl and bring the championship to Bismarck. You know, so often culture is just a buzzword, but it really does feel like the Bucks have swung the culture to a winning one here in Bismarck. Time for our first break. When we come back, we'll sit down with head coach Rod Miller. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Bismarck Buck Coaches Show. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Everybody needs an off-season, but our announcers have a tough time slowing down. Did you mind if I practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson right. holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third Carmel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center and the Bismarck Bucks season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free box ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come first serve so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information and go Bucks! Welcome back inside our Beck Studios. As we have every week this season, we're joined by head coach Rod Miller. Coach, thanks for joining us one last time. I'm glad to be here as always. Game started off on a strong note, up 7-0 at the end of the first quarter. However, Massachusetts scores the next 24. They don't give up the lead. What did they do that threw you off your game and allowed them to really take over in that second half? You know, in this game, you know, eventually you have to, you know, you have to try to score. You know, unfortunately, you know, we were not very productive uh, off the bat, you know, scoring offensively. You know, we had some stops, but in this league, you can only keep a team down for so long. I mean, they only had 17 points, you know, with uh, like seven, I mean, eight minutes left in the third quarter. So, I mean, that that eventually the wheel is going to break, you know, and that's, of course, that's what happened for us. We just didn't have enough, you know, firepower that game. And then defensively, we made a couple of mistakes, a couple of missed tackles that we should have had, a couple of penalties that gave them extended drives that they probably shouldn't have had. So when you accumulate all that, it goes in together, you know, at the end of the day, you know, those things type of happen. But, you know, we, we, early on, we just didn't get the scores that we needed uh, when we had those stops and it just caught up to us at the end. You would mentioned on last week's show that both quarterbacks, Kenyatta Allen and Caleb Lewis, would see time 
with Lewis recently come back from an injury, Allen joining so late in the season, how difficult it was it to find that balance and try and get both guys in a rhythm? You know, you try to get in the rhythm, but, you know, it's a playoff football. You can't mm -hmm. make excuses, and we're not going to make excuses. You know, we just didn't play well. I mean, both guys got in, and you said they just couldn't get a continuity of the rhythm that coach wanted. You know, and unfortunately, that's, you know, what happened. But, you know, ideally, you love to be in a one-quarterback situation, but for the changeover that we had this year, it just wasn't that situation. So all we can do is, is do with what we have, what we work with, and have what we're dealt, the hand that we're dealt to we have to deal with, and that's what happened for us in this game. Unfortunately, it just went the way it did. Feels like one of the team's real MOs of the season was even when you guys got yourselves in a hole, always continued to fight, make it a close game. What did you like out of your team in the second half and early in that fourth quarter when you were clawing back? You know, they were clawing back, and we have some drive, some determination to get there, you know. But like I said, when it's the playoffs, everything, the intensity turns up 110%. You know, we, we turned up. We just didn't turn it up enough. So, you know, and that's what happened. Like I said, we can't sit here and, and make mistakes and, and, and talk about things that should have happened, things that did not happen that should have happened didn't. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. And unfortunately, like I said, it didn't go in our favor this game, and we just have to bounce back and get better. I know only one team can win their last right. game, unfortunately. However, a lot of steps in the right direction this season. Five more wins than in 2019. First trip to the IFL right. playoffs. What are you most proud of? about the team this season? You know, I'm proud of the determination that these guys had. Like I said, we did have some adversity with the quarterback situation, but, you know, these guys were hungry, they were determined, and they wanted to come in and do something special. Like I said, when you go from a total rebuild of a team and an organization, like you said, to go from two wins to seven wins and possibly could have had eight and host a home game, you know, those were things that were huge strides. So we just got to continue to, with that. You know, so I'm proud of what the team did in that aspect of it. You always want to do better. Nobody's ever satisfied. I mean, you win one championship, you want to win two. So <laughs> you're never going to be satisfied. But I'm satisfied the way these guys fought throughout the season. I'm, I'm very proud of that. You mentioned that fight. There was a lot of adversity this right. season. Maybe the biggest thing, five different quarterbacks this right. season. What does it say about the team that despite all that turnover at the game's most important position, still able to compete in every game and still able to punch through your ticket to the playoffs. You know, it means a lot. It means the next man up situation and mentality and guys, you know, that was that one position that we got hit at, but the other guys stood around and held their ground and did a little bit to help you know, bring this team up. You know, you don't want to be in that situation, but when you have, you know, two of your quarterbacks to move on to higher levels of football, that's what this league is about. So mm -hmm. you can't be upset about that because that's what you want to happen. You just have to fight through diversity. But, yeah, it's, it's tough when you have to go through five different quarterbacks, but at the end of the day, you still got to play every game. Despite all that quarterback turnover, still had two of the top wide receivers in the league, Raheem Harvey and JT Stokes, both in the top 10 in yes. receiving yards and touchdowns. What did the wide receiver core prove to you in the league this year? You know, it proved that they can play with anybody who throws the ball to them. And that was a big part of us being successful. Those guys, it didn't matter who was throwing the ball to them. They were still going to do their thing. They were still going to come out and work hard. And they found a way to adapt to every quarterback that came in. And that's always the key because usually it takes, you know, a lot of time to adapt and get used to your new quarterback. We didn't have that option. So mm -hmm. those guys made it a point to, to adapt to the quarterbacks. They did extra throws after practice to make sure they were ready to go with that quarterback. So that's why. That, that shows the true character of the kind of receivers that you have. I mean, they can catch the ball whoever throws it to them. Defensively finished in the middle of the pack, sixth in points per game at 41 and a half allowed this year. As a coach who calls the shots on those and that side of the ball, what stood out to you the most this year about how that group developed? You know, we developed and did some things. Like I said, I said before, and our guys know, our philosophy on defense is a little bit different. You know, we don't, I look at the points aspect, but our thing is we're big on third down conversions mm -hmm. and fourth down conversions. And if you look at that, we're in the top four of, of both. So that's kind of what we look at in that aspect of you want to get stops. You want to get a team in third down situations. And we get them in third down, do you want to get them in fourth down situations? So that's kind of what we kind of build on. I think with the young team that we had to, to be able to do that, we have some room for improvement, but I'm proud of where these guys fought. I mean, we averaged almost four and a half stops a game mm -hmm. throughout the whole course of the season, you know. So our goal is to get three a game. So we have an average like that. That's a good average. But, again, we still got to get better. There is always a ton of turnover in this league, whether it be week to week or year to year. And you even mentioned a lot of the point of the IFL is to hopefully get guys on to an even higher level of football. With that being said, who are some guys in particular that you're really hoping to bring back next season? You know, I, I like you know, Zero Hendrick on defense. You know, he did well, of course. You know, Malik Duncan as well. Uh, I like uh, Devon Keith and, and, and Jeff Branch did well, you know, on coming back there on the defensive side of the ball, coming in late. Offensively, like I said, I like our receivers. Mm -hmm. I, I like Mr. Rankin, you know, who's a very good running back, you know, there. Uh, like I said, our receivers did great. 
I think that uh, with our line, you know, our center, Tory Boyd. And so we got a lot of players that we want to look at to possibly bring back and evaluate. You know, force in this business, you're never going to get your whole full roster back. That's just the way this business goes. So if we can get a good majority of the guys that we'd like to have come back and guys that want to come back, we will have a foundation to build on, you know, ideally for next season. So your goal is to try to at least maybe get, you know, 12, 10 to 12 of those guys to come back next season. And if we can do that, we'll have a good base to build on for 2022. All the strides the team made this season. I know. I don't know if you're ready to talk about 2022 just yet, but going into your offseason, what are the biggest things on your mind to try and get this franchise to the next step? You know, first and foremost, obviously, we got to get a solid quarterback to come in, you know, and, and of course, it's, it's just his or miss because you want to get a good quarterback, but it's a possibility of losing a good quarterback if he's that good. So, but still, you want to get a good quarterback. Uh, I think we could, you know, improve in every area. You always look where you're at. I think, you know, we did not win a championship. You know, we had seven mm -hmm. wins. So you can improve in any area because you weren't, you know, where you needed to be. You weren't the final champion. So we're going to sit back and evaluate, look at all the guys we have. Everybody's going to test them out and get a scoring grade. And that scoring grade, we have a criteria that we have to have. And if you meet that certain criteria, that's what you look at. If not, then you try to you know, look to replace. But you know, we're going to try to look to bring in whoever can help us at every position to help us get better. Because like I said, next year, we want to be hosting that championship trophy. Coach, we've been doing a code word of the week every single week. Obviously, not another game to look forward to this time around. What's our code word of the offseason, if you will? Build. Our code word is build. We want to build off the momentum that we started. We want to build off the things that we have here. Like I said, when we go from a two-win season to a seven-win season, it's, it's a scheduled build, a casual build that you want to get to. So now we want to keep building what we've Establish what we've built to get better. So that's our word off season. We're going to build this program to where it needs to be. Like I said, this is the third year of uh, my, my vision that I have for this team. Mm -hmm. So this is the year I really think we can take off, and we're going to do that. Coach, congratulations on a great season. A lot of steps in the right direction, and uh, we know you guys are only getting better from here on out. Thanks for joining us every week this year. And I'm glad to be here and look forward to doing it again next season. Absolutely. Head coach Rod Miller one last time, and the code word is build for the offseason and for this week to one more chance to win some free swag. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll take a special look at the most important players off the field for the Bucks. Hey, Bucks fans. If you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Everybody needs an off-season, but our announcers have a tough time slowing down. Did you mind if I practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third caramel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center, and the Bismarck Bucks season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free box ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come, first serve, so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information. And go Bucks! Welcome back to the show. With the season sadly now at an end, unfortunately, of course, that means there will be no more football in the event center for another season. 
But of course, Bucks fans came out in full force to support their team once again this season. In fact, five of the Bucks' seven wins came at home this season, and the Bucks finished five and two at home. And as the season went on, the Bucks only got better on their home turf. Their last home loss was back on June 5th against Sioux Falls, with the Bucks winning their final three games at home. As much credit as the players deserve on the field, the Bucks give a whole lot of credit to the fans. It is my fans. Appreciate you. Thank you for always coming, bringing the noise, bringing the energy. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate every single last one. Some of them got some candid videos of me scoring touchdowns, and I appreciate that. That's love. I never, I never had that before, so I, I really appreciate the love and support. The atmosphere here is just amazing. Just everybody feels so crowded. They loud, and they just excited. And you know, they they know who we are, and they cheer us on. And just a, it means the world. And as a player, you get that type of love. You just only gonna go harder. A huge thank you to the Bucks and uh, all the Bucks fans, I should say, who came out in full force to support Bismarck this season and made it a special year, no doubt. We're going to take a short break and come back with our code word winner of the week. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show. Hey, Bucks fans. If you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit BismarckBucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Everybody needs an off-season. Laura announcers have a tough time slowing down. Did you mind if I practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson but... holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third caramel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center and the Bismarck Box season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free box ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come first serve, so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information and go Bucks! Welcome back, and before we put a bow on our final coaches show of the season, time to reveal our coaches code word winner. It is Mike Martin. Mike actually winning for the second time this season. So, Mike, congratulations once again. Thanks for all your support of the Bucks in the show this season. We'll be sure to be getting in touch with you very soon for a little extra swag, extra prize. And for you guys at home, this is your final chance to win some Bucks swag and prizes. Pay attention. It's our final coaches code word segment. The keyword is build. Going into the offseason, trying to build something, build upon what the Bucks did this season. Seven wins, a franchise record, first trip to the IFL playoffs, but finished the season seven and nine, seven and eight in the regular season. Still a ways to go for the Bucks headed in to the offseason and headed in to 2022. Build is the word. One last time, take that to Bismarck Bucks Football on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram one more time to try and win some buck swag and 
prizes. Before we head out, let's take a quick look at the playoff schedule for the IFL semifinals. If you're still paying attention, which you should be because they have got some great matchups. Top seeded Arizona taking on maybe the most electrifying quarterback in the league in Duke City's Nate Davis set the single season record for passing touchdowns in a year actually did that against Bismarck to close out the regular season they'll be going at it and then number two Massachusetts who just took down the seventh seeded Bucks in the opening round they'll be taking on number three Frisco remember that fighters game against the Bucks that is a team with a whole lot of talent but has also had a lot of roster turnover this year number one Arizona number five Duke City number two Massachusetts taking on number three Frisco to close out or rather to go into the semifinals and set up a new United Bowl champion with Sioux Falls out in the first round. Somebody new has got to be crowned champion. That's going to do it for us before we go and head out. Just want to thank all of the people who made the Buck Show possible this year. Head coach Rod Miller for joining us each and every week this season and all the people on the Buck staff who were so helpful from the players to the amazing Bucks operation staff in particular, Heidi Ripplinger and Destiny Brown. Huge thank you for them. Show and the broadcast of the Bucks games this season wouldn't be possible without them, as well as our crew behind the scenes, Cole Gendero, Luke Tibor, going back to Anthony Friggin, and on down the line, there is a long list of people. Can't thank them all right now, but thank you everybody who helped us out and made the show possible this season. We had a blast putting it together. One final time, I'm David Sugarman signing off and wishing you a safe week. Thank you so much for supporting the show and the Bismarck Bucks this season. We'll see you in 2022.